In economics, we have a problem that's very similar to the problem that's, that was around in physics before Einstein came along. And it has to do with our theory not pinning down, not specifying how to measure certain things. Now, if you think about physics, in physics, uh, Einstein taught us that certain things are not pinned down by the theory of physics in terms of their measurement. So time is not pinned down. How we should measure time is not set by the, the equations of physics. And how we should measure distance is not set. So the theory of relativity that Einstein posited says that the measurement of time and the measurement of distance depend on your frame of reference. If you're traveling through space in this direction at this speed, you're going to measure time at this spot differently than if you're heading through space in that direction at a different speed. Time and distance at that spot will be measured differently. So your frame of reference can be thought of as your language. If you're talking about things from this perspective, from this frame of reference, you're going to measure things a certain way. If you're talking about it with this language, this perspective, you'll measure things over here a different way. In economics, we have that same problem. And it has to do with fiscal, uh, measuring fiscal variables. So, and it's actually, uh, I think, very much the same problem. And I refer to this as the uh, uh, general relativity of fiscal language. And I have a, a, a paper with a co-author, uh, Jerry Green, uh, uh, that has that title, The General Relativity of Fiscal Language. The problem is this, that our mathematical models of the economy do not pin down how to measure certain fiscal variables. So for example, uh, something that we think is well measured, the government's deficit, how much the government borrows every year, that's not well pinned, that's not pinned down, that's not specified by our economic models, by the equations of our neoclassical models. That's what we refer to our, our body of, of theory as neoclassical New, cl new classical models where um, the agents in the model are uh, acting rationally and aren't fooled by language. That's uh, an important feature of these models. So if I'm uh, uh, the government and I come to somebody, let's call him Joe, and I take some money from him, and maybe I give that money uh, back to him in uh, 10 years, okay? So I take, let's say, uh, 10,000 rubles, and I give him back 10,000 rubles in 20 years. Now, one uh, description of this is that I tax Joe uh, 10,000 rubles right now, and in the future, I'm paying Joe back uh, a transfer payment of 10,000 rubles. So that's uh, a tax and a future transfer payment. And that's one set of words. That's one language, one frame of reference. Uh, we would compute a certain size deficit. The deficit is the government spending minus its taxes. So because we're taking this 10,000 rubles and calling it taxes, we're going to get one reported deficit. Now, what if I use a different set of words? What if I take the same 10,000 rubles from Joe but I call it borrowing. And what if the uh, 10,000 rubles that I give to him when he's older, I call that 20,000 rubles. Suppose I suppose the 10,000, if I was paying him interest on the 10,000, would be 20,000. And now since I'm using the words borrowing, I'm going to say I'm borrowing 10,000. I'm paying you back, Joe, 20,000, which is your principal plus interest. But when you're old, when I do that, I'm also going to hit you with a 10,000 10, ruble tax when you're old. So here's the story. I'm taking 10,000 from Joe now. I'm giving him back 10,000 in the future. 
The first set of words is that I'm taxing him, I'm making a transfer payment when he's older. The other set of, second set of words is I'm borrowing the 10,000. I'm handing him back 20,000, principal plus interest, and then I'm taxing him in the future 10,000. Now, if I use the second set of words, the deficit will be 10,000 rubles larger because I'm saying I'm taxing, I'm not taxing Joe 10,000, I'm borrowing 10,000. So Joe is in the same real position, right? Uh, he's canning over 10,000 now, he's getting back 10,000 in the future. How we label the government's receipts and payments is economically arbitrary. There's nothing in our, in, in the physical reality here that tells us whether to use one set of words or another to describe the government's treatment, my treatment of Joe. I could be discussing that treatment in French or German or English. It won't change the physical reality that I'm taking 10,000 rubles now and giving, him, giving Joe back 10,000 in the future. But the official accounts of the government, uh, the official deficit, the stock of debt, which is the sum of all the past deficits, that will be affected by what words we use. Also, what taxes are levied, are, are uh, said to be collected this year is a matter of the government's language, how it labels receipts, the receipts it's taking from Joe and other people. The transfer payments it's making, they will be a function, they will be dependent on the choice of words. And uh, there's other measures, uh, for example, private saving, how much uh, Joe is uh, privately saving. Uh, well, if I'm borrowing him money from him, borrowing the 10,000, if I use those words, Joe has this asset. He has this government bond. And therefore, his private saving is different than if I use this other set of words, which, which is that I'm taxing him now. So we have all these measures, this whole set of measures in public finance, in economics about fiscal policy, which have no foundation in economic theory. And therefore, we have uh, a problem that's very similar to the problem that uh, Einstein was looking at when he uh, discussed, uh, when, he, when he thought about the measurement of time and distance. There's a problem because uh, uh, the, the theory didn't support the uh, proposition that time and distance were well-defined measures. And our economic theory does not support the proposition that, that these fiscal variables are well-defined. So that raises a big question. Right now in the world, uh, we have a lot of countries, some of which have large official debts compared to their gross domestic product, compared to the size of their economy. And Many people think they're in big trouble because they have this large debt to GDP ratio. Other countries like the United States have a lower debt to GDP ratio and people think they're not in bad shape, fiscally speaking. If the debt is not well defined, then how can that be a measure of what kind of trouble the country is in? in terms of its fiscal situation. So we need to ask our theory, we need to ask economic theory, what is the right, way, what is the right thing to measure when it comes to fiscal policy and its sustainability? Is a country doing something that it can afford to do? And is it leaving large bills to future generations? So what we need to do is develop new ways to look at fiscal policy, which are free of labels, which come up with the same measurement independent of the choice of, war, of language, of the labeling convention. So uh, I, with some other colleagues, have developed uh, something called generational accounting and also fiscal gap analysis, which is trying to look at uh, fiscal policy in a label-free way and do, some, do the analysis in, in accordance with the equations of our models, of our economic models, because they're telling us what to do.
just like Einstein's mathematics told us what to do, our mathematics and economics tells us what to do, how to measure things so that we end up with the same answer no matter what language we use, what words we use. So in the case of Joe, what we're looking at is uh, how Joe is being treated over his entire lifetime. If I'm taking 10,000 now and I'm giving him back 10,000 in, let's say, 20 years, then there's a certain uh, present value taking from Joe. I'm taking 10,000 now, that's got a certain value in the present. The 20,000 rubles I'm giving him back in the, or the 10,000 I'm giving him back in the future, in 20 years, has a smaller present value, a smaller value in the present because 10,000 rubles in the future is not the same as getting 10,000 today. So Joe is hurt, okay, uh, by this, and there's a certain present value uh, uh, damage done to Joe. He's, he's giving up something now, and he's getting something smaller back in the future, as measured in the present. And so therefore, we can get a, a, a lifetime treatment of Joe that's invariant to the language. I haven't actually said anything when I just described this. I haven't actually uh, mentioned the word taxes or transfer payments or borrowing. I've just said 10,000 now and getting back 10,000 in the future. And what's the net of that in present value? And that's what the generational accounting and the fiscal gap analysis does. It doesn't ignore the future. It takes into account uh, the future. So if you take into account the future, then what words you use will not affect the net present value. The generational accounting question is this. How much is the government going to be taking from young people uh, over their entire lifetime, regardless of whether it's, of how it's labeled? If we just look at what the government's going to be taking and giving to, to young people at different points in their, time, in, in their life, how big will the uh, net taking be? Uh, and how does that compare to the treatment of older generations, people that are currently alive? Are we on a path to take a, uh, a lot more from young and future generations than we have taken and will take from current, a lot, current living generations, particularly those who are older? And in many countries, uh, they have engaged in policies over the years uh, that have left a big burden for future generations. And these policies are really unsustainable. Now, the U.S. is a very good example of this. For six decades since President Eisenhower took office, the government has taken from young people and given to old people and promised the young people that they will get back uh, money in the future when they're old. This, uh, and they've used labels to uh, not put on the books the promises that they've made to young people about their future uh, receipts, the future monies they're going to give the young, they promise to give the young people. I'm one of the people that was promised when I was young, when I was paying a lot of things called taxes, that I get a lot of benefits from health care, health care benefits and pension benefits when I was older. I'm in the baby boom. We were, we handed over a lot of money. It was taken by the government and called taxes, not borrowing. And we were promised a lot of money in the future. And that, those promises uh, were not put on the books because the government did not call that borrowing. So these promises to me that's a real debt, that, a real obligation that the government has, but it's not showing up on the government's books. From a generational accounting perspective, you'd see exactly how I'm being treated if the policy is sustainable. But what the government has done is to promise things that are not sustainable. They've told to the, baby boom, the baby boom generation that we're going to get a huge amount of money in the future, but there's no ability to pay for it because there's not enough young people earning enough money to take from them to give to us. So this Ponzi scheme, this, this uh, take-as-you-go policy of taking from the young, giving to the old, using language to uh, disguise the obligations of future young people to pay this, 
that um, is going to lead to a very bad outcome for the U.S. and other countries over time and uh, has put us into a very difficult position here in the U.S. This uh, generational accounting and fiscal gap analysis is where uh, e is what economics says we need to, to uh, use to overcome this problem of general relativity, of fiscal language. And all countries in the world need to start doing that kind of analysis and move away from traditional measures of fiscal policy, taxes, transfer payments, borrowing. These measures are not well defined and they've, and they've confused a lot of people about the true fiscal situation. And also a lot of politicians have been manipulating, uh, the, manip manipulating words and language in order to report uh, uh, things in a misleading way so they can continue to get elected. <laughs>